Ms. Amanda Dory, Director of the African Center for Strategic Studies, participants of the Emerging Security Sector Leaders Seminar flagship program, I bring you greetings from Nairobi, Kenya. I am delighted to join you at this historic seminar targeting emerging leaders in the security sector. Historic because it coincides with the commemoration of 25 years of the African Center for Strategic Studies. During this short existence, the African Center for Strategic Studies has built a credible community of leaders, provided a trusted platform for dialogue and build enduring partnerships and catalyzed strategic solutions. I recall the initial sessions that defined the place of Africa in the global security architecture. A new emerging threat then was terrorism and violent extremism. The SES offered the space to engage with this threat and of reflecting on how leadership could address it. I am delighted that this course draws on the alumni from this period, a useful way to plow back to the upcoming leaders. I have no doubt that 25 years on, we shall look back at this point with pride, fully vindicated that we contributed to the right set of competencies that will enable the Africa, which has been thrust to the fore by, by various trends and dynamics to take its rightful place in history. There therefore cannot be a better time to reflect on what type of leadership we need for strategic thinking in defining, in shaping, and handling the myriad of challenges and importantly, opportunities that are upon us today, not only in Africa, but globally. Because as I will be arguing today, it is the African continent that will shape the contours of the next epoch in human development. But before I do so, allow me to thank Amanda Dory a friend and the director of the African Center for Strategic Studies for the invitation to deliver the keynote address at the commencement of this year's Emerging Security Sector Leaders Seminar. The significance of this honor is not lost on me, and it is my hope that I will frame the issues in a manner that enables all the participants in this course to build on, to draw and on the observations that I will be making. The notion of security has been evolving over time. Today, the reality of diverse risks, threats, and challenges occurring together has led to the theorization of polycrisis context. The understand of what contributes to and undermines peace and security has shifted dramatically from the traditional interstate relations to a myriad of hard and soft issues so now we speak of social dynamics coalescing into insecurity in the form of the failure in provision of social services such as health, food, education, across the entire gamut of what has become known as human security. This in addition to issues that have been associated with the notion of state security, such as terrorism, insurgency, tensions between states and groups of people, that threaten the essence of state sovereignty as understood conventionally. This changed scope of security threats renders traditional security constructs inadequate to, effectly, to effectively address the security needs of an increasingly globalized and interdependent world. Leadership therefore becomes perhaps the most important component in defining the security dynamics and how countries deploy their instruments of national power to respond to the risks and seize the opportunities as well as project their image and influence in this dynamic and complex international arena. What is the context in which leadership is I wish to point to six issues that I believe leaders must pay close attention to today. First is the fledgling world order that is causing significant uncertainty. It is clear today that the world order is changing from the bipolar 
world, which was dominated by the East-West rivalry, to the unipolar, which was dominated by the United States, and now increasingly to a multipolarity characterized by new networks of actors with more assertive countries such as China, a resulting Russia, and emerging economies such as India, Brazil, Iran, Indonesia, and Turkey within the framework of BRICS. Today, even smaller countries like Qatar and the UAE are having and creating greater impact beyond their regions. These developments are causing global realignments, resulting in competition for power and influence with the likely result of increased conflict and wars. They are also returning to the great power rivalry involving the USA, China, and Russia, and the changing dynamics within the European Union are of great concern. The effect of a number of global trends, such as the financial crisis, the COVID pandemic and other pandemics, the Ukrainian war, the war in Gaza, have caused significant supply chain disruptions across the world and combined to complicate regional and international relations and cooperation. The unrelenting effects of climate crisis across the world, causing untold destruction and accentuating vulnerabilities for communities and states across the world as experienced by all small island nations in the Sahel, in the Horn of Africa, in Europe, in Americas and Asia. In these evolving scenarios, states need to analyze, states need to reposition, and they need to carefully balance their relations in order to guarantee global peace and security. Second uh, trend that leadership must look at is in helping to reshape the format of response in this situation of flux. For the last 75 years, the world has relayed on multilateralism and global solidarity to address common challenges. Today, we are witness to weakening multilateralism from the lowest level at the regional organizations to the highest level of the United Nations. This is exemplified by the rise of ethno-nationalism tendencies across the world, the responses to the COVID-19 pandemic where we had apartheid, uh, almost apartheid tendencies of rejecting, of refusing access to the vaccines, and increasingly the inability of the United Nations Security Council to function optimally. This has in turn translated into paralysis in terms of global governance, leading to a growing call for reform of the global governance institutions to make them respond effectively to the challenges of today. How we define the parameters of that reform process is crucial in terms of leadership. This coming September, the Secretary General will be hosting the Summit of the Future. And the fundamental question is what leaders and parameters including mechanisms are desirable to take us to the next place in the world. Third is the question of what type of leadership will enable the world to restore the gains lost owing to the rising tensions, conflict, and wars in the contemporary global environment. Today's assessment of the Millennium Development Goals indicates that we are farther away from the target achievement by 2030 in all the parameters. We know that the growing tensions and wars have undermined gains made towards international peace and security. Today, across the world, we are faced with angry populations and increasingly hanging states and governance infrastructure as demonstrated by demonstra elections everywhere. Today, less and less numbers of populations engage in the electoral processes, and there is growing restiveness across nations. What leadership is required to reconnect governors and the governed? Fourth is the erosion of state sovereignty due to the effects of globalization. The contemporary operating environment poses a complex web of internal and external issues that affect the state. These include advances in technology, whether we are talking about AI, cybersecurity, or increased influence of international corporations and other non-state non -state actors. 
the erosion of state sovereignty is exemplified through influencing of elections, formulation of policies, and even terrorists and other criminal groups taking control of territory, undermining state authority, and exercise of governance role within parts of the state. Fifth is the spread of terrorism, violent extremism, and radicalization, which is a concern for international peace and security. Numerous violent extremist groups such as ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Al-Shabaab, Boko Haram, amongst others, have not only emerged, but have crossed territory footprint. These groups espouse the ideology of creating caliphate covering significant geographical areas of the world and spreading new areas in new areas such as Mozambique and Central Africa Republic, threatening essentially our beliefs in freedom. The Middle East and North Africa have experienced the highest number of attacks in the recent times, followed by South Asia and Sub-Sahara Africa, while Europe has also seen an increase in frequency of terrorist attacks. Six, perhaps the most stark threat to all is the growing climate crisis. In a recent observation, the Secretary General of the United Nations warned that the era of global warming has ended and the era of global melting has begun. The threat of climate change is existential and poses a threat that could change the world both human and environment as we know it today. It calls for urgent action at quantum scale to recalibrate the ecosystem and humanity. The manner in which the world responds to this existential crisis is likely to usher in a new development paradigm and epoch. Today, there is a growing consensus that the world must move towards green growth path. What leadership is required to drive this shift in the development paradigm of humanity. Finally, is the increasing demand and competition for resources and means of production globally. The world is also experiencing an increasing demand and competition for resources and means of production, including food and water, agricultural land, energy, and rare earth minerals. The competition for these resources and the means of production may lead to social upheaval, violence, economic disparities, and conflict between and within states. At the same time, the situation is compounded by environmental degradation and climate change. How do we generate an understanding of a public global good that will be secured by the manner in which we conduct ourselves at the national and domestic level? It is my submission that these issues will require strategic leadership from you and your countries. How do these broad observations then manifest in the African context? There are a number of security challenges that confront the African continent today. Weak governance and state fragility that manifest in insecurity, unconstitutional seizure of power, inability to provide adequate social services, terrorism, violent extremism, accentuated effects of climate change, cyber threats, and growing interference by external interests and actors, which have led to the exposure that increases vulnerability, such as debt distress, just to mention a few. In spite of these challenges, we have seen efforts within the African continent to reframe the challenges and to offer solutions. I wish to reflect on the role of African-led initiatives as part of the vision for a secure Africa and for the opportunity to contribute to the prosperity of the world. Over the past 20 years or so, Africa has undertaken a number of innovative missions to address emerging security challenges. These have been demonstrated successfully in West Africa, whether it was in Sierra Leone or Liberia, or more recently in the Gambia in Somalia, in the DR Congo, in Burundi, and several other countries on the continent. As the progress is made in Somalia clearly, it attests to the African Union peace and security operations, which are ready and when properly resourced, able to create the right conditions for peace. The challenge of unpredictable, inadequate, and unsustainable financing in African-led peace missions 
is the discussions that African leaders need to address. It has been the primary challenge in Somalia. The growing need for Africa-led peace operations is proof that the future peace and security on the continent will depend upon continued evolution of African-owned modalities for conflict prevention and resolution given within the African peace and security architecture. It is therefore important that Africa takes leadership in building its capacity for its peace and security architecture. The second issue for Africa touches on the role of good leadership in defining the modalities of forging strong and value-adding partnerships based on mutual benefits and amidst the emerging security challenges. Today's engagement of African states with the external actors is framed in partnership terms. However, asymmetric power continues to characterize these relationships as well as Africa's position in international organizations in spite of its weight in terms of its numbers and resources and potential. This situation can only change by creating a critical mass of leaders at the different levels who focus on leveraging meaningful partnerships that are framed within a future that looks at the continent as an equal partner in the relationship. Africa presents a number of opportunities to the world and is the solution to the existential threats facing the world today. Numerous assets that include, that are found in the continent can anchor the partnerships that respond to the emerging global security challenges. The first one is demography. Africa today presents the second most populous region in the world after Asia, with a population estimated at 1.4 billion people. With a median age of 19, it is predicted that by 2050, Africa's youth will represent 30% of world youth population. By 2100, 20, it will be a half of the world youth population. Africa is therefore the most rapidly growing continent and its growth will inevitably influence the world system defining the next epoch of human development by 2050 when one of three people in the world will be living in Africa. And it will be therefore a critical source point for the required labor and skills for the world. Furthermore, Africa will be presenting the largest market anywhere in the world. This shift presents an opportunity for partnership in provision of global workforce, including leadership in global security and a large market for goods and services. The second opportunity that Africa presents to the, to the world is in the resolution of the existential global challenge of climate crisis. In the light of its natural resources that are vital for the global green transition, Africa holds 30% of the world's mineral reserves, many of which are critical to renewable and low carbon technologies. According to the World Bank, in order to meet the expected rise in global demand, production of minerals and metals such as lithium, graphite, cobalt, will need to increase by nearly 500% by 2050. This cannot be achieved without Africa's resources. The awareness of these opportunities by our leaders, both in the security sector and the civilian component is critical in protecting and advancing the collective interest of, of the continent. The fundamental question is how to unlock this potential in a manner that offers security for Africa and contributes to the global public good. In answering this question, President William Bruto and others have focused attention on the enabling factors, namely resources and technology. Africa's potential can only be realized by the ability of our accessing resources, uh, financial resources in particular. Currently, the financial markets are structured in a manner that locks out the possibility of positive change. The risk profiling, the interest rate, all combine to make it impossible for Africa to drive positive development. Today, 
26 countries in Africa are under debt distress. Most of the others are using more than a half of their resources to pay for loan repayment. It is our submission that the world financial systems, like most of the multilateral architecture, are not fit for the world of today and tomorrow and need reconstitution and transformation. The urgency and quantum of action required for climate action cannot be supported by the current global financial architecture. We also need frameworks that allow technology transfer to enable value addition to the African assets that will provide jobs, spark green industrialization, reduce vulnerability, and drive prosperity. The Emerging Security Sector Leaders Seminar that you are privileged to be part of provides an opportunity for you to debate and uh, define the leadership development that is required in the security sector in order to realize, to deal with, to confront, to address the 21st security challenges beyond the security sector and beyond the straight jacket that we have continued to define this. The forging of civil military relations with an understanding of the critical role played by each one is critical in confronting the evolving security threats. In conclusion, let me once again thank the African Center for Strategic Studies for the excellent platform they have continued to provide for African leaders to have a conversation that is geared towards a more secure and prosperous future. I wish the participants of this leader seminar all the best and thank you for listening to me. God bless you.